talked about, like I said, man, my dog Oak talks about the strategies that you have to have to combat certain things to put yourself in a certain moment. And I said, I shared the Sudoku book, and one of the dudes named Rob watched the podcast. He was yeah. like, yeah, I remember hearing that. And so for me, it's like reflecting, thinking, I think all the way back when I first started. And it'd be like, man, let's let's go, bro. Yeah. And uh, I had a I had a revelation. Icky Johnson. Oh, going for the championship that ain't coming close. This might require taking notes, homie. Listen close. Serendipity when you know you the one who chose. We going past the end zone, crushing every goal. I feel it in my enzymes and my chromosomes. If you ain't come outside to go hard, then go back home. I'm in my zone. If it ain't great, it's a better love alone. This for the world. Put what we speaking on on speakerphone. Yeah. Wills, let them know what we be on. Serendipity, man, tune in. Yeah. What's going on, good people? Welcome back to Serendipity. I am Inky Johnson here with my brother. I'm Oak. What's happening, people? Glad to be here, boss. How you doing, man? Doing well, doing well. You know, we yeah. been a minute since we've been at it. No question. No All question. Things happen and spring break and all that. So yeah. Glad to be back in the saddle for real. Spring break, treat you well? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was good, man. It's uh, me and Dejan. Oh, you know, know Dejan kicking yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, we got in a full blown go kart war <laughs> up in Gatlinburg. <laughs> oh man. Jada whooped all of y'all. Man, Jada, Ink, my sister. An old man thought he was finna do it to us, though. It a, he had a crew of 12. We yeah. give it to him. We strategize him. Get it. You know, I know how to... When you ride them goat cars, you stay on that inside corner. Mm-hmm. You get it good. Then when they try to pass you, I told Jay and Ink, you just hit them on that back hip. You spin them. Keep it rolling. Right. You know, yeah. we out there breaking all type of rules. <laughs> They done, I done went an extra lap on them. Oh, Allison mad at me. You need to stop. You don't listen. <laughs> I'm like, man, much we done paid for these go car. We finna ride. You hear me? Yes, sir. We yes, finna sir. ride. But let's get into it, man, with this quote card as we usually do. It reads, if you must look back, do so forgivingly. If you must look forward, do so prayerfully. However, the wisest thing you can do is be present in the present, gratefully. Man, that's deep. That's deep because, and when I say deep, it, it's, it's several different levels to it. Like the first part is look back with forgiveness. Yes, sir. You know, we, we look back at our, our own actions. Mm-hmm. We look back at the actions of others. And a lot of times we carry resentment. Mm. We carry that baggage into our present day. And it, it affects how we deal with people in our lives today based off of uh, some of the atrocities, some of the hurt, some of the trauma that happened in the past. So that's why the first thing that has to happen when we start thinking and reflecting is we have to keep forgiveness at the forefront so that you can move into the new day on clean slate. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we, we carry a whole lot of baggage and then it begins to multiply. It's like a snowball effect. Mm-hmm. You know, you want each day to be a new day. And then in terms of like the last part where it says, um, then you, you, you want to look um, to the future prayerfully. Yes, sir. You know, just the faith of the substance of things hoped for, yet the evidence of things not seen. Absolutely. So we, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring which means there's not a lot of equity and not a lot of time equity that we need to place in tomorrow. Mm. Yet, the most important thing we need to do is be where our feet are. No doubt. Be in the present. Whether that's you're going through rough times, you're going through great times, it doesn't matter. Be in the present. Be where your feet are. And then over time, it begins to take care of itself. Like you begin to just build blocks upon blocks of positivity blocks upon, upon blocks of experiences that get you through life. No doubt. But if you don't start with, if you don't start with forgiveness, nothing else can happen. Mm. Because that resentment will, is almost like, you know, an anchor, something on your leg and you in the, in the water, it's just gonna keep pulling you down. 
pulling you down, no matter how hard you're trying to swim to get your head above water, right? You have to let the past go, and you let it go through forgiveness and through healing. That's good, man. That's good. I love it, man, when it says the wisest thing you can do is be present in the present gratefully. Like, um, we live in a world, oh, man, that's so transactional. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, and we deal yeah. with people based upon transaction. You give me what I want, all good. Situation play in my favor, all good. If the things go the way that I want it to go, all good, right? And it's so transactional to where when you speak to being grateful in the present, regardless of how a situation may manifest, turn out, or play out, mm-hmm. right? And you say to people, don't waste the experience. That's why when Saban came out and said, don't waste the failing, I was like, man, I love that. Not because of the quote. I love it because oftentimes when things don't go the way we want it to go, we throw the experience away, right? And if you could teach a person to be grateful for things that don't go their way, if you could teach a person when the transaction doesn't play in their faith, just be grateful for it, right? Mm-hmm. I love it. It says stress is caused by being here but wanting to be there, right? Stress is caused by being here but wanting to be there. Or when you think about your life and you say, man, I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be doing that. No, are you supposed to be where you at? <laughs> yep. Believe it or not. It might not feel good. You might not like it, but there's always a lesson and a blessing in the moment, right? Mm-hmm. What's for you is for you. Where you are currently, that's where you're supposed to be at in that season. Now you can strive and press for more, of course. We all evolve and we all grow, right? But the wisest thing that we can do is be present in the present gratefully. Yes. Yeah, that, 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 great, that grateful aspect. I remember the first time we did this show. No doubt. Right? The, the, the tenor of that show, you know, we were new to it and I definitely were new to it and whatnot. But the tenor of that show was gratitude. No doubt. And I think we've carried that how many of, of these we've done. Mm -hmm. Right. But what gratitude does and what it allows for is it eliminates um, comparison. No doubt. It eliminates whether um, it it, it feels good or it ends up good or it feels bad or ends up bad. Mm -hmm. So the way in which we can always remain grateful is to go into every situation, non transactional. Mm. Talk about it, picking that up. Meaning I'm doing this because I want to. I'm not doing this because I want a result. I'm not doing this for some type of external validation or external appreciation. I'm doing this because this is what I genuinely want to do. Yes, sir. Right? And I'm grateful that I get the opportunity to do it. Mm -hmm. The result of playing a basketball game the result of whether I win or lose, that's cool. I may feel bad. I may feel good. It doesn't matter. But what I'm most grateful for is that I had the opportunity to play. No doubt. I had the opportunity to go to my job. I get to, not I have to. Mm. And if you're in a, in a situation where the vast majority of the things that you do in life are have tos, mm, talk about then you're going down a road of misery. Mm. You have to create a life to where you're doing the things that you get to do, the things that you want to do, not the things that you have to do. Yeah, I'm picking it up. Because when you you get the opportunity to do the things that you want to do, that you enjoy doing, then gratitude comes as a result. Picking it up. Right? It's hard for me to ask a person to be grateful for something that they didn't choose to do. They had to do it. Mm -hmm. See, I can ask a football player to be grateful for two a days. Yeah. Because you chose to play football. Right on. Right? I can ask someone who is working the job of their dreams and doing something that is they don't necessarily like for that moment Mm. because you chose to do it. Right. Right? It was your choice. No doubt. You wasn't forced to do it. So be grateful for the opportunity that you get to do something rather than you have to do something. Yeah, man. I'm picking that up. I love it when you talked about... um, just deleting the outcome, right? Like, yeah. like the outcome ain't that deep to me, right? I'm more right. so of like the process of self-improvement. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, you got to ask yourself the question, what fulfills you? Yep. Right? That's it, boss. 
Like winning and losing, cool. Of course it bothers you emotionally, right? But when you put in work, when you prepare, when you give everything you got to something, the process of self-improvement, even if it doesn't go the way you want it to go, you still have something to hang on to knowing that you put some pride into the process of it, right? Just the process of self-improvement. When you do things, you try your best to do it a certain way, right? It's not predicated upon outcome. I'm not doing it, like he said, because I'm trying to attain this. I'm not doing it because I'm trying to get this. I'm not doing it for this, because the moment you get into the for this, to get this, this, like you're going to be on the emotional roller coaster, mm -hmm. right? Now it's no pride in what you're doing. Now it ain't no integrity in what you're doing. Now you have very little character in what you're doing. And so every once in a while, man, I think you got to pull your head up for a little bit of air and just ask yourself, man, like, what is it that fulfills me when I'm chasing that dragon? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fulfillment is a powerful thing. It is. Think about this. Think about Dr. King. Think about Malcolm. Think about Michael Jordan. Think about Kobe Bryant. Think about anybody on, in any realm of life, Muhammad Ali, it doesn't matter. You know, sports is my religion, so I'm always going to go to sports. But right. anyone that you think is great, a doctor, it doesn't matter, right? I think one of the things that they fail to do and that we have the opportunity to do Talk is we're able to articulate the, we're able to articulate the process hmm. and how much that is more important than the result. Yeah. So people will say, if you really listen and study Kobe Bryant, Kobe was always talking about the process. It wasn't so much about winning. Yes, sir. It was about being competitive. Mm. Anybody, it was all about the process, all about learning and gaining and growing and being invigorated by what you're doing, mm. not what you're going to get. Talk about it. Okay. Right? So... I hope that we're we're turning the page to be able to articulate really what these cats and what these women were trying to say to us. Mm. You know, the love that uh, Dr. Johnson, I forgot her name, worked for NASA, who, you know, sent, sent uh, what you call them to the moon and all of that. Dorothy, uh, you know, hidden yeah, figures. Moved, yeah, right? absolutely. Those wonderful women, the, the love was in doing the work. Phenomenal. It was in doing the work. Oh, man, phenomenal. It wasn't, she didn't know that they were going to end up at the moon or not. Mm. They didn't phenomenal. know what this was going to one was going to culminate to. Yeah. But it was the joy of doing the work, even in the midst of the hardships mm. and the discrimination of being a woman and being black. They still did the work. They did the work, dog. And that was the love. That's where you get the, the feeling of life. Yeah, man. Think That's about it. Good. I've been there. Right. I've I've had. I've been teaching a long time, mm -hmm. uh, a quarter of a century. Yeah. And I had a couple years where, man, I don't even want to go to work today. Mm. That feeling is almost as, as worse as me losing my dad. Wow. Wow. Man. Like the, the feeling that people are walking around and not excited about going to work tomorrow, mm. going to 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 live and be invigorated by the thing that they do and you get paid for it, okay, cool. But the joy is in doing the work. No question, man. Picking that up. That's that's the it. That's Picking why that that's up. what you're searching for. Picking that up. You're searching for the you're searching for the joy in doing the work, not the 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 accomplishment of having completed what you've done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love it, man. Um we looked at a car here earlier that read, comparison is the thief of joy, yep. right? Yep. And cats, when I get around cats in the speaking space, they often ask me, like, Ink, when you go into a room, what you looking for? What you trying to do? What you trying to accomplish? And, you know, we got a lot of different answers for it. And I always say, like, man, I firmly believe every place that I go, every room I go into, God has me there for a specific reason and a specific person. I really do believe that. Mm -hmm. And I search for that because in the early years to do it, to travel, to miss your daughter's cheer competition, you get the picture, everybody in the picture except you, right? Your daughter got the little trophy, the little medal, 
It's and a cute. It's a cute. Smiling. It's a cute picture though. Oh no question. Without, <laughs> okay. no question. Your son game. Everybody there, bro, yeah. except you. You driving back from somewhere in Kentucky, speaking, yeah. right? It's hard and it bothers you, mm-hmm. right? But you understand what you're trying to get to in terms of the process of what you're doing. Right, and I'll never forget, I went in the room, I spoke for a college, and at this point, I'm searching, but I'm battling internally. Like, all right, man, I'm missing some stuff. I feel like I'm missing a little too much stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I come home, my children sleep, I wake up, I hit the road, my children sleep. This was like early years, right? Yeah. yeah. And I go to speak at this college, and I'm battling, man. I'm, I'm ready, though, I'm locked in, but internally, I'm battling, right? purpose, fulfillment, trying to do it. And I'm getting up to the podium, Oak. I'm getting into my spill and my piece and I'm periphering the room. And the way that I work a room, I always go either right to left, left to right, and I pace. And I'm working the room over here and I see a gentleman get up and I can see him because I'm periphering him. And I can see he's moving. Then I just hear something hit the floor, boom. And when I turn, my man had passed out, whatever happened. The room, people hollering, his wife just starts screaming, right? People start running, hey, call 911, this, that, and the third. And I'm standing at the podium, hits my spirit, pray. Mm -hmm. But when you go into these environments, what some young speakers or people in general may not know, oftentimes they tell you to stay away from that portion because everybody has different beliefs, which I'm respectful of and I understand that, right? And so it hits my spirit, pray. And I'm at the podium like, man, God, I want to, but I don't want to offend nobody. And the situation was so overwhelming, it just started coming out. I just started praying. I couldn't control it. I pray, and they get the situation under control. Ambulance come in. They wheel my man out. The athletic director comes up to me. Never forget Soon as he gets to me, oh, I just start apologizing, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm so sorry, man. Like, for praying. He was like, no, 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 it's all good. He said, as a matter of fact, I don't think God brought you here to speak. I think God brought you here just for that yeah. moment. Yep. Right. And so, even in terms of the work that we do, I always tell people move past the comparison. Mm-hmm. Like, get way past that. Am I better than him? Do I speak better than him? Do I do what I do better than her? Like, it's way deeper than that, right? Because every room you go into, you're there for a reason, yeah. right? Somebody can be battling and need the words. I tell people often, man, I call them legacy moments. When somebody comes up to me and say, hey, man, my son really needed that. I watched that video with my son. Or, hey, man, you in Oakland, y'all was talking about this. Boom, man, I love that, right? I was just sharing with you, a cat was talking about when you talked about the Sudoku book and having strategies to just bring you back to center, Mm -hmm. right? And so Mm -hmm. the work is never about, am I better than you? Right. My focus long gone past that in terms of, when I say better than you, I'm talking about the people that when you're striving to be great, when you're striving to be excellent in what you're doing, don't get caught up in the comparison. Get caught up in doing the work, mm-hmm. right? I love it. Saban said, you don't see a sign at Alabama that said win a championship. And it wasn't. I walked through the building numerous of times. I've never seen a sign that say, win the championship. I'll tell you what I did see a sign say, be a champion. In all that you do, be a champion. Because if you be a champion with your work ethic, dedication, commitment, behavior, integrity, character, what does it lead to? Championship, man. And yeah. all those things you can control. Absolutely. Do, Absolutely. Those, all of those things are you issues. No doubt. Right? Your no integrity doubt. is a you issue. So, you know, we 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 will discuss even more, but everything in life is a you issue. You know I got that? you. I got a question for you, Oak. I got an answer um, for you. Kendrick Lamar, J. Man. Cole. J. Cole apologizes. The Kendrick Lamar. You know, Come on with it. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, man. Talk Come about on. it. What came to mind when you saw it? Like, how did you feel? Talk about it. Of course, the world has their angle, their thoughts on it. I just want to hear, what, what did you think about when you, when you saw that? J. Cole apologizing to Kendrick Lamar. I'm going to preface it. You know, it's rap. 
right? Guys are going back and forth. They taking shots. These guys are supposed to be considered top three. Drake, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, in terms of the lyricism with the young guys, right? And so Kendrick Lamar was like, man, bump the big three. It's big me. You understand? He came, I'm talking about spraying the AK. J. Cole yeah. shot back, and then he came back and apologized and said, it didn't feel right on my spirit, you know? So what you thought about when you heard it, saw um, it, what came to mind? Well, first when I heard that there was a, there was a beef, or there was a back and forth. Um, with both of them, I was like, dang, man, they 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 getting, they getting sucked in. They getting mm. sucked in. The boy's nice too, man. Right. They they nice with it, yet they're also, there's a, 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 a an aura about both of them that they're above the fray. No doubt. And it's um it's like the enemy is saying, okay, we're gonna get y'all. Yeah. We, we're going to get to the top. We're going to go to get the top and bring them down. We've seen it 25 years ago. Mm. You know, yeah. 1996, five. Yeah, we, we, you know, I'm not even going to give that any energy. Just like when I first heard that J. Cole popped back, I didn't know that Kendrick had said something. I heard J. Cole had popped back. I was like, that's mm. not Kendrick. I mean, that's not J. Mm. It wasn't even real to me. Yeah. Like, you know, I get accused of sometimes living in my own bubble Bubble, anyway. I was like, man, I ain't paying that no attention. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not even happening in real life. Mm. You know, that is something, that's some old Hollywood entertainment type stuff, right? Okay, so now J. Cole gets on stage. I saw that. You know, I, I usually don't even deal in the reels because I'm always trying to change my algorithm. No doubt. <laughs> but, you know, something like J. Cole or whomever comes up, I'm always going to check them out because, like, this cat, young cat got me through one of the darkest times of my life for, like, three months. All I listened to was J. Cole. Mm. Just the realness, him being, you know what I'm saying? I identify with J. more than I do with Kendrick only because of geography. No doubt. J. over here where we at. Right. And, and small town, you know, so he's going to always drop something from, from that perspective. But when I saw it, I was like, man, this dude is strong. He done got back to his zero. Yeah, buddy. Right? This yeah, is a strong buddy. brother here. Like, this is real. This is not. Mm. And that's what I, that's what I felt when I was listening to him as I was going through some of the things I was going through. It was like, mm. this, I, can, I can latch on to this. I can hitch my wagon to this young fellow. Right? Picking it up. And um, so, the apology and all of that, that level of, of 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 just strength and what I call man, just manning up, just being a real dude. No question. I loved it. I loved it. Definitely, man. And but also, and I rarely use the word but, mm -hmm. but the way in which we've made it an issue or the way in which our society is making it all oh, these weak or this, that, and the third, it should be no question about this because... Mm. His apology is his character. It, it's what he's presented. Pick that up, man. Pick right? that up. The out of character was the going back at Kendrick. Mm. That was the out of character piece. No doubt. Which is that small bit. Mm. That, that, that small bit doesn't make you strong. Who mm. you are and being able to live the fullness and be the fullness of who you are is what makes you strong. Yeah. Who you are is, 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 is your vulnerability. Pick that who up. you are is your character. Now, if you're always going at someone, if you're always showing a lack of character, that's who you are. Mm. Then that's, that's, that's who you are right here. But if everything, all the other aspect is, uh, of your life and the way in which you present yourself, I mean, I never met Jay. Right. But I'm saying the way in which you present yourself is on the up and up, I'm above the fray, I'm, I'm trying to figure life out, I'm trying to get to my own personal truth. Mm. Man, that 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 apology, that, just that moment, that was one of those moments you were talking about. Absolutely. For me, I loved it. Yeah, I loved it personally, but I also loved it for the culture. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Beautiful. Because now you got something to hang your hat on and see what does vulnerability look like? Mm. What does real compassion look like? As he said, what does reflection look like? Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't even sleep. I couldn't even live with myself mm. walking like this. Is what you know, basically yeah. what he was saying. Right? Picking that up. And having the strength to announce that and say that publicly? Mm. Come on, man. 
We don't. Yeah, we got down the road ten years with that. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. As opposed to going back five years with them going back and forth. Yeah, we loved it. We people been talking about it. Ooh, you heard what he said. You heard what he said. They're just like in the schoolyard. People see a fight or you riding down the road. Mm. You see a, a traffic accident. Everybody looking. Everybody looking. Yeah. But you know everything going cool or people doing wonderful things. That stuff doesn't go viral. Like this, is the part that needs to go viral. No doubt. Absolutely. Right. And this is where the commentary comes in. Mm. About the apology, not the the beef going back and forth, or mm. you know your lyrics, my lyrics, man, y'all miss me, man. Yeah, man. Man, kick rocks on twenty six a.m. or p.m. <laughs> whichever one you want to. <laughs> Love it, Jay. Love yeah, it, Jay. Man. Respect, man. Like you always got to ask yourself, man. Like, what are you celebrating and what are you perpetuating? Right, with every relationship that you have, with the connections that you have, what are you celebrating and what are you perpetuating? Right? I got respect for any person that can bring themselves to a space and place to where they can apologize when yeah. they did something that was outside of their character. Regardless of how it makes one feel, I respect that. Right, When somebody can say, hey man, listen, I did something that was outside of my character because it was influenced by this. I apologize, man. That was a misstep on my part. Now I get the element of competition, like in hip hop, when they talk about going back and forth. Yeah. Just the yeah. lyricism, like guys really just, you know, almost like sparring. Right. Like I get that element of it, but like when you take it outside of that culturally and you look at a man on stage willing to apologize and not only apologize, apologize in front of his supporters. Mm -hmm. Like that's strong. Yeah. Making yourself yeah. vulnerable enough to say, man, you know what? Let me let y'all know, but also Y'all my supporters, y'all here right now at the Dreamville joint, but like, y'all rock with him too, right? Like he dope, right? You know what I'm saying? Like that's next level. And I think the more that we can do that and display that example, mm -hmm. like man, that's, that's heavy, that's strong, man. Because a lot of times like, young people get the words, but they don't get the example. Yeah, yeah. Right? Oftentimes we give them the word, but we don't give them the example when the situation happens. We don't show them, right? In real time, when a situation happens, they never get to see the example of how it's supposed to look when a man has had a misstep and apology. You hear, hey man, if you do somebody wrong, apologize. But very seldom do a young person get to see a man at the top of his game, in his prime, say, you know what, man? That didn't sit right with my spirit. I was in the wrong, I apologize. Just for a young man to see that. He can get into a situation because oftentimes you hear about conflict resolution. Cool to hear about it, but when do you see it, right? You hear about, hey man, if somebody do you wrong, don't do that, practice, forget. Yeah, that's cool, but when do you see it, right? Like the reason I had resentment in my heart is because at the time when I was resenting my father, I just couldn't see it, right? I wanted to see it, right? I could talk to him, but I wanted to see it. Because it's a lot of things you run into later in life that if you see it, and so even with my children, the press is, oh, yeah, I'm going to try my best to say it, but also, man, I'm going to try my best to do it. Right. Right? So they right. can see it. You understand? So yeah. that was powerful, man. J. Cole, yeah. respect. Kendrick, respect. Like, yeah, in terms sure. of the sport, man, and how y'all do what y'all do, that's to be respected. But when J. Cole pulled that, I get the people saying lyrically and hip hop wise, but for a man to sit on stage and apologize and say, man, misstep, bro, my chin out, take your best shot. I was in the wrong. That's another level of humility. That's another mm, level humility. of being grounded. That's another level of strength oh. you have to possess. I, 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 I guess the, the lesson, and the more I think about it, the lesson that I, I deem or glean from this is Right or wrong doesn't matter, mm. right? It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. Yeah. What matters is if it doesn't sit well with your spirit, then apologize. Offer your apology. Picking that up. Right? Because we we can say, because it, sometimes it's, it's almost like, well, I told the truth, mm. but I told the truth in a mean-spirited way. Mm. Apologize. Mm. If it doesn't sit well with you. Yeah, man. Meaning you determine because because what I heard from Jay was like I just I, it just wasn't cool with me. Yeah. Regardless of what anybody else said, 
it wasn't cool with me inside of me the way in the direction that this thing was going mm. and the part that I was playing in it. Because, you know, we, we can have a debate whether somebody was right, he was right, he, didn't t- he shouldn't have apologized or so he was wrong or he should apologize. No. Mm. No one determines whether you apologize or not but you. Mm. Which means if it sits, if it doesn't sit well in your spirit, then you apologize. Now, that's where this internal... Mm. Reflection comes in, right? Talk about it. Because you go and do somebody wrong and it sit well in your spirit, then you're just not a good person. Mm. Mm. Right? Yet, even when you don't do someone wrong, you're just doing what's maybe what's best for you or it was reactionary, okay? You right. came to me, I come at you. No doubt. No doubt. But it doesn't sit well with me. Yeah. And if it doesn't sit well with me, I must atone. Mm. And, and you always feel it. Yep. Right? Like your spirit almost lets you know when, nah, man, don't do that. Yep. Right? And so you you feel it, yeah. even though in certain situations it's a little bit harder to do. Right? Being right or wrong doesn't matter. Being righteous is what matters. Being righteous. Pick that up, man. Yeah. That's good. That's good, man. Yeah. Um, I thought about some oak, um, because oftentimes when a person exits a situation, or if something doesn't play in their favor, or if something happens, right, and doesn't go the way they want it to go. I said, man, it's not always about what happens, right? Something happened with one of my boys, and he was like, man, like, what happened hurt me? Like, that really hurt me? He was like, but it was the fact that the person couldn't be honest about what happened that really hurt me, right? He was like, if they would have been honest about it, I'm like, all good. He was like, the fact that they couldn't be honest about it is what really hurt me. And I thought about it. I'm like, bro, it's not about what happens. It's the fact that sometimes people can't be honest about what happens when the pain comes. Mm-hmm. Right. And so just the fact that a person can be honest in the midst of something that brings pain is a W. Because yeah. even if a person is not willing to accept it, don't like it, it don't make me feel good. At the end of the day, when they lay down, they're going to be like, you know what? At least they was honest about it. Mm-hmm. Right? Can I be honest with you? When I was coming out of school, about to go to college, young ladies trying to latch on. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. They like, man, ink, I need to get with ink, this, that, and the third. I'm trying to work it out with my then girlfriend, now wife, Allison, right? I'm trying to do the right thing, man. I'm trying to be, I ain't trying to be casting over. You understand? Yeah. I'm trying to do the right thing. So a rumor pops up. Right? Rumor pop up, yeah, Ink out here doing this. And it wasn't none of it true. Right? I hear Ink got a baby in Edgewood. Ink supposed to have a baby in Edgewood. I'm like, this Ink got a baby in Edgewood. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> right? A yeah. girl goes to my now wife, then girlfriend, right? And tells her, you know, they say Ink got a baby in Edgewood. My wife say, I know that ain't true. Then she was my girl. I know that ain't true. Girl said, how you know it ain't true? She said, because if that joker had a baby, he'll take care of it. Yeah. Like, he wouldn't be out here running. He wouldn't be out here doing something. He'll take care of it, Mm -hmm. right? Knowing him, who he is, how he operate, how he lives his life. And so I just think, man, when you can do the right thing in the midst of trial, in the midst of opposition, in the midst of adversity, it makes people know your character. Yes. And when a person knows your character, it doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't right. matter externally how people view you. It doesn't matter how something plays out. If you got a group of people that say, nah, man, like you said, I've never met Cole, but I listened to Cole and I knew when he dropped it, that ain't Cole. Yeah. You knew his character. Right. You know what I'm saying? Off yeah. rip. And so, man, always have your character stand 10 toes down in the midst of situations. And when your spirit speaks to you, acknowledge that and respect that. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I think they call it, I just heard the term probably about five, six, seven years ago, gaslighting. Yeah. Which is simply, you know, you hurt and I just don't acknowledge that you hurt. Mm. I'm saying it's a figment of your imagination. Yeah. So I'm making you feel crazy. Right on. Right. That's why cats feel, he felt so hurt. That it's like, you, that's how less of me you think mm. to just not even acknowledge the pain. Mm. 
I'm not even asking you to own the pain. I'm asking you to acknowledge the pain. Yeah, man. Pick it up. Right? Man. So, Pick I understand. Yeah. Oh, what comes to mind, man, when you when you hear the word trauma? There's trauma. levels to it. There's levels to it. But like, I guess right now that the, the journey that I'm on, mm-hmm. trauma from a, a emotional and psychological standpoint. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of times trauma, you have traumatic events like you break a leg or, you know, you go through, you get a, a serious disease or something like that from a physical standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, I think about trauma from the standpoint of emotional and psychological beingness. Yeah. So then when I hear trauma, I think healing. Right. When I hear trauma, I think go immediately into the root of that trauma, traumatic experience, mm-hmm. and then let's begin to heal from it. Yeah. Right? Take if if in, in all cases, take ownership of the part that you have in it and then heal from it. Yeah. Then once you begin to heal, then you can ask other people to join in on that healing. Mm. Right? That means like, like you were saying, like, oh, okay, my my pops may have done something, our relationship may have been rocky. Mm-hmm. If I'm looking for my pops to start the healing process for my trauma, then I'm never going to heal. Mm. But if I start the healing process and get down the road, then I can bring pops in on it. Or I can bring the other person in on it. And then that's when, because together, then that's when we both going to get the healing. Picking right. up. So trauma is, um, trauma is very... It, it's, it's kind of driving us right now. One yeah. of the things that's driving us. Because I call it just the influx of the information age. Like the more information you get, the more traumatic experiences are. Mm. Because you got a whole lot of different perspectives and degrees from which information is coming in. Mm. Back, you know, when I was coming up or before I was coming up, you only had one or two different perspectives. So those are the only two or three perspectives that you had to really deal with. Now, because there are so many different perspectives, that trauma is, is, is so much more intense, which is why it is so important that we focus on the emotional and the psychological healing of these traumatic experiences. Mm-hmm. Because it's so many different degrees in which that trauma is coming at us. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm picking that up, man. Um, when I hear trauma, like I always think about, um, it may not be your fault that it happened, but it's your responsibility to heal to from it, right? Yep. And like, don't be afraid to do the work because we all have work to do, right? Don't be afraid to do the work because we all have work to do. And it's like a guy asked me a question during Q&A. He was like, man, I see you speak. You out in the world. You're doing your thing, man. Platforms, people support you. Cool. What keeps you humble, right? What keeps you grounded? And I was like, man, I had a lot of people that helped me. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that did things for me that didn't have to do it. You being one of them. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you, man. I really do, yes, man. Sir. Yes, sir. Like the, the sacrifices, the investment that you made in me at a young age, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? I mean that from the heart, man. But I was like, man, I had a lot of people that helped me and did things for me that didn't have to, right? And when you look back at traumatic experiences that you may have encountered, may have went through, in the moment, you may be young, and you might look at the situation and be like, oh, it is what it is, mm-hmm. right? Like, I remember I was playing in a game once, and a coach was like, hey, Ink, look at these cats over here at this school. Like, they got two parents. They coming from two-parent household. They ain't stronger than you. Like, your mama working, right? She doing double shift at Wendy's, this, that, and the third, right? And I'm sitting there, I'm getting zooted. Like, yeah, you right, they ain't, no, they ain't messing with me tonight. I'm finna go give it to them. And I remember sitting with my cousin one day, and I was like, hey, bro, you remember that stuff that assistant coach was saying to me? He was like, yeah, I was like, about the parent, two-parent household and these cats, and you, your mama worked this, that, and the third. I was like, bro, like, 
you should want two parents in the household. Mm -hmm. Like you should want to be able to go in there and talk to your mom, talk to your, like you should aspire to do that. But the way it was being presented to me at the time as a tactic, it made me look at it a certain way. Right. When I was like, nah, that ain't what it is at all. But I was young. But when you get older, you always have to deconstruct. I tell people often, you gotta be careful, man, because the things that serve you as your advantage will once become your disadvantage if you're not growing and developing. You said something to us at a young age as teenagers, bro, and I loved it. You said, always be willing to challenge and reevaluate what you think you know to be true. Always be willing to challenge and reevaluate what you think you know to be true. You can look at a situation, they can give you information, how it should work, how it should go, how it should play out. You can use that information in that situation and it won't play out that way. It won't go the way you think it's gonna go. You could be in a traumatic experience. They could give you tools to deal with it. Or you could think, oh, it ain't that deep. And then you can find yourself in a space and place in life to where you're like, oh man, I missed the lesson back there. I missed the lesson at yeah. exit two. Now I'm at exit eight, and it's a lot of things at stake, and I didn't catch the lesson. I tell people often, oh, they presented to me a therapist right after my injury. Mm -hmm. I went and sat with my man. He asking me the name. I'm giving my man the coldest shoulder ever. He had, hey, how you doing? How your day going? Good. Yeah. <laughs> how your day? I know he in there like, this dude do not want to yeah. be here. And so he relayed back to them like, I don't think my man feeling it. So they was like, Ink, you ain't gotta go. But when I started going through a battle mentally and physically years later, one of the things I thought about was, man, they provided me a resource in the midst of my traumatic experience, but I just couldn't process it at the time, mm -hmm. right? And I wish I had the spirit, the disposition, the bandwidth to say, all right, Ink, just try it. Yeah. Like my wife always says something to me, man, and it sounds so simple, but in moments it's profound. She always say, just try it. Just try it. Because the way my mind works, I'm trying to line it up. If this happened, I'm trying to be methodical. I'm trying to be schematic. And she always say, just try it. What's the worst that can happen? Just try it. Chase the dream. Just try it. Right? Forgive me. Just try it. Yep. Talk to your mom. Just try it. Right? Got something with your kids. Just try to talk to them. Picking up the phone. Just try it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that deep. And so always be willing, man. Always be willing. And put your posture and disposition in the face and place to be willing. It's something you said that I would tell when I was coaching high school athletes, especially football. I said the number one thing you don't want to say is I wish I knew then what I know now. Because mm. okay. that means, like you said, when the moment came, you missed it. Mm. And then now, you know now that you missed the den. Mm. You don't ever want to go. You wanted to reduce those things and those situations in life where you don't have to say, I sure wish I knew then what I know now. Mm. Which means I'm trying to pick up everything that's being put down. No doubt. Now, that doesn't mean I have to keep it. Right on. Right on. I'm just picking it up. That's what just try it means. Oh. Pick it up. Let's pick it up. Evaluate it. Does it work? Whatever. Because you wouldn't give the therapist the time of day, you didn't pick it up. Mm. You just kept on going with life and you look back and be like, man, I sure need that stick right now because this lion, <laughs> me and this lion finna go to walk. Woo. Boy, talk about it. You see what I'm saying? He was trying to give you the spear. That's a fact. So, so everything happens for a reason. Everything in your life, every time, pick up what is being put down. No that doesn't mean you have to keep it. Mm. You pick it up to evaluate it, pick to it reflect up. on it. Pick it up. And then life, what, what's going to happen though, life in the universe is going to show you, oh, I need that. Mm. That's why some things you just pick up and put it in your toolbox. Yeah, man. You That's might not real. need it for 20 years. That's real there, dog. Man, that's so real. That's real there. Yeah. Right. I'm picking that up. That's, that's it. That's it. That's, that's literally it. Pick up what is being put down. Yeah, man. I'm picking that up. Oh. And you get to a place, it may, be, it may be a tool that you don't need, mm. but it's a tool that you need to give to someone else. Mm. Because if you didn't need it, then God wouldn't have put it in your face, bro. That's a fact. 
Pick it up. Pick that up, man. Talk about it. Jeez. Like, everything happens for a reason. Your steps are ordered. Mm. Your step was ordered here. So, okay. It's just like when you're doing the GPS, right? Boom, you missed the turn. What it do? It redirects you. Redirects, absolutely. Right? So we're constantly being redirected as opposed to just pick up and follow the directions. Mm. Not the directive, but the directions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. The, the, the definition of wisdom is one's ability to see beyond the obvious by heeding the words of the elders. Hmm. Because you couldn't see that you were going to need this type of uh, conversation with this therapist. Not necessarily with this therapist, but what was going to transpire in terms of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't see it. Because in that space, in that time, you and your connection with your elders was was not there. Mm -hmm. Because your elder would have said, I don't care if you want to go or not. Take your butt back in there. (laughs) And engage with this fellow because mm. God ain't sent you here for no reason. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Picking it up. Wisdom is one's ability to see beyond the obvious by heeding the words of the elders. Yeah, man. Because if we left to our own vices, we gonna we'll leave so many tools mm. that should be in our toolbox. Yeah. That we could either use, other people can either use, but this is what's most important. Mm. That we don't have to give to our kids. Yeah, man. We Absolutely. don't have to give to the next generation. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Cats say, man, you ain't got to win all your battles, but it's a must that you fight them. Yep. <laughs> you ain't got to win all of them, man, but it's a must that you fight them. You know what I'm saying? Put that armor on and fight, man. Yep. I mean, end us with a word, Oak. Oh, end us with a word, man. Um, what do you think about and what comes to mind, Oak, oh, when you think about Joy. The way that joy permeates the entire room, the entire your entire circle, your entire environment mm-hmm. is an, it's it's so infectious. Yeah. But negativity is too. Right. There are people that I see, you know, we talked about there that I see. Now I don't duck in the bathroom. I just stand there and look at them. Because my joy is not going to be disturbed. (laughs) But what I'm saying, my joy, because, see, once I link my life to other people, that's what gives me the strength to do whatever. Mm. So I'm not going to dip away. I'm not going to go away. I'm going to stand right here, and my joy is not going to be moved. Why? Because the person behind you needs my joy. Yeah, man. I need that person behind you that's walking down, I need to engage with them for my joy to increase, Mm. right? Mm. So joy is so infectious that it it, it can alleviate a lot of the depression, a lot of the downtimes, a lot of your negative energy, a lot of your interactions that end up in fights and bickering and fussing and cussing and all of that Mm. because you have allowed a situation or someone to disturb your joy, Mm. as opposed to allowing people, like in this room right here, there's joy. Right on. Right? Definitely. So now when I leave here and go wherever, I don't care what the situation is, Mm. because I'm taking joy with me. And then when I go and get next to some more joy, it just starts to multiply. Mm. So think about joy as a thing that you give to people and people give to you. Yeah, man. It's a reciprocity. And it grows, and it grows, and it grows. Picking that up. And then it begins to supersede the moment. Mm. Because you're walking in joy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm picking that up, man. I love it. Um, When I hear joy, man, I think about control the situation. Don't let the situation control you. When I hear joy, I think about it's not about what happens. It's about how you respond to it. When I hear joy, it's about perspective, right, spirit. And the reason I say that, Oak, is because um, the number one thing I think about when I hear the word joy is control what you bring to an environment, control what you bring to a moment, like my joy, Mm -hmm. right? It's not going to be dictated about what I face, about who I come in contact with, about how things happen. My joy ain't going to be, happiness can be dictated by that, but my joy 
is a higher state. Like you're not going to dictate the joy, how I do it, how I bring it. You're not going to dictate that, right? For me, I view it in terms of the things that I can control every single day, the same way I view when I show up, my work ethic, my dedication, my commitment, my sacrifice, all of that is interconnected to my joy. I can control that, right? It's like commitment. Staying true to what you said you would do long after the mood that you set it in has left. Happiness is when it goes my way, great. When I start out, great, I'm happy. Commitment, stay true to what you said you would do long after the mood that you set it in has left. When I don't have that feeling, now I infuse joy. I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm joyful, bruh. When it doesn't go the way I want, I'm gonna show up anyway. That's joy, right? When I don't feel like it, I'm gonna do it anyway. That's joy, right? Not happiness to me. Yes. Bring your joy with you. Just like they say, bring your own guts, bring your own joy, bruh. Right. Bring your own joy. Don't don't ever confuse joy with an emotion. Talk about it. Joy is your state, state of, being. of being. Absolutely. Your Thank emotions you. are fleeting. Yeah. Your emotions are variable. Mm. Your joy is the coefficient of the equation. Yes, indeed. We appreciate your time, man. We appreciate the support. Stay safe. Peace. Peace. Serendipity, man. Tune in.